Good day everyone! It's a great pleasure that me and my groupmates are able to discuss this topic with you, the process of communication. Well, what comes to mind when communication is in play? Or, what do you think when you hear the process of communication? Well, it may be as simple as conversation between you and a classmate, a call between you and a friend across the country, and so on. Communication only occurs when there are two or more parties involved. The process of communication is a cyclic one as it begins with the sender and ends with the sender in the form of feedback. Also, means of by sending messages back and forth and we shall discuss its element today. Hello, I have a question for you. Do you know what's a speaker? Well, from my understanding, a speaker chooses his or her opinion, makes the message accordingly, and chooses how to convey it, such as when a president conveys his state of the country address. Yes, yes, yes. that is correct. This is also a primary and the communication process, but in other shapes of communication, the speaker might not be as self-evident. Hmm. When one is talking with his or her mother, both members interchange as speakers. When just hanging out with one's companions, everyone can end up as a speaker from time to time, but not at the same time. Oh, no. The message is what has to be conveyed or bestowed to someone else. The idea, feeling, suggestion, guidelines, orders, or any content which is intended to be communicated is a message. For example, a message is the introduction of a new product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. correct. This is the central to the process since the point of communicating is to say something. The message to be sent is based on why the speaker needs to say it educate or to influence what the speaker needs to say and how the speaker wants to say it. The third element in the process of communication is listening. In listening, one is hearing what others are saying and one are trying to understand what it means. This is one of the important act to have a good communication because in listening, we can learn, know, and adopt instruction from teachers, friends, family, and other people. The act of listening involves complex affective, cognitive, and behavioral process too. Listening is also the ability to accurately receive and interpret a message in the communication process. Listening is the key to all effective communication. Without the ability to listen effectively, messages are easily misunderstood. The listening process involves the five stages, which is the receiving, understanding, evaluating, Responding, active listening is a particular communication technique that requires the listener to provide feedback on what he or she hears to the speaker. The fourth element is the channel. The channel is used to communicate a message affect how the audience will receive the message. Communication channels can refer to the methods we use to communicate as well as the specific tool we use in the communication process. Communication channels can be categorized into three principal channels, the verbal, written, and the nonverbal. Each of these communication channels has different strengths and weakness, and oftentimes we can use more than one channel at the same time. There are only five channels we use in nonverbal communication, such as the ears, eyes, skin, the mouth, and the nose. In other words, a message is sent and received via the senses. Of course, messages are first received through the ears by hearing, while gestures and facial expression are received by the eyes through seeing, and the skin, mouth, and nose are not the main pathway for the sending a message, but they are only the still crucial in the imparting and receiving of the message. In verbal communication is the most often used when we think of communication. We might imagine two or more people speaking to each other. This is the largest aspect of verbal communication, speaking and listening. The source uses words to code and information and speak to the receiver, who then decodes the words for understanding and meaning. 
One example of interference in this channel is the choice of words. Next, we are going to talk about response. When we are talking about communication between humans, a response is a behavior shown by a person. Either sound, gesture, facial expressions, body orientation, which is either A, a behavior shown by the initiator or by the receiver of the communicative event. That is, a speaker emits a behavior and the receiver emits a behavior that is related to the speaker's behavior. This exchange goes back and forth between persons, in which the behavior of each is affected by the behavior of the other. As such upon earlier, the receiver or the listener may respond to the message either negatively or positively. So the speaker needs to be aware of the feedback to ensure that the message was sent effectively. One of the elements of communication is noise. Noise is acknowledging someone who is not a participant in the discussion. Ha! There are three more types of communication in noise. I bet you don't know them. <laughs> oh, well, um... The three more types of communication in noise are physical, physiological, and psychological. Oh, um, uh, um, mm, uh, <laughs> During the physical noise process, noise buyers can take several different forms. Loud passersby, music, traffic, or children playing are all examples of this. Even a simple phone ringing can cause a listener to become distracted. Noise distorts the message and prevents it from being interpreted in an intent manner. The physiological is a barrier created from the communicator's physical condition is an example of this form of noise. Cold, headache, hunger, and fatigue are distractions that arise in the communicator's body. The psychological is a speaker's or listener's mental interference. Anxiety, daydreaming, or worry, or any emotion is a type of noise that interrupts our mind to concentrate on listening. Symptoms of psychological issues, such as serious mental disorders, can find it difficult to understand others or communicate their own thoughts. So let's discuss communication and situation. Let's go! Physical location is when the interaction is going to happen. The physical environment has an effect on the flow of communication. Place, time, weather, and temperature are examples of environmental background factors. Psychological setting depends on the participants. If there's an urgent or special location, a proper clean room will be the location for interacting with the participants. Hello everybody, I'll be laying down the different examples specific to each element of communication. The examples that we're going to work with begin with waking up, then making breakfast, and lastly having guests over at our house. Let's start with identifying the communicative situation. The communicative situation for waking up is hearing and waking up to the sound of the alarm clock. The communicative situation for making breakfast, on the other hand, is generally making breakfast for consumption to gain energy. The communicative situation to inviting guests over to your house is the act of inviting guests over to our house. Next, we're going to be identifying who or what is the speaker or source of message. The source of message for waking up is the alarm clock ringing to wake you up. The source of message for making breakfast is your sense of hunger. The source of message for inviting guests over to our house may vary because there are a lot of people from time to time that may be a speaker or source of message at once. Next, we'll identify what the message is. Rather, what is the message being sent? So, for waking up, the message being sent 
is the sound of the alarm clock notifying you that you'll have to wake up. And for making breakfast, your hunger is a sign being relayed to you notifying you that you will need to make breakfast. And for inviting guests over to your house. The message is knowing that you'll have certain guests at, after a certain time and proceeding to invite them into your house. Next, we'll identify who the intended listener or receiver is. Now, we'll be identifying if noise is present. So, now for waking up. In this case, the sound of the alarm is not really considered noise because it is what's needed for you, the person, to wake up. And for making breakfast, noise is also not present in this situation because the need for you to know when you require nutrients is essential for your survival. And for having guests over to your house. In this situation, there's also no noise because of the sound of the doorbell to your home and that it can notify you when your guests have arrived. And lastly, we'll be identifying if there's feedback. So for waking up, the feedback from the alarm clock is not really possible without the intervention or action from someone who heard the sound. And for making breakfast, feedback in this example doesn't require intervention because it is in human nature to be able to automatically tell when you're hungry. And for having guests over to your house, the feedback of expecting guests to come over your house isn't really possible without knowing which time you'll have them over. That'll be all. Thank you. English is my favorite subject. My favorite, my favorite. There are only five what channels we use in and verbal communication. B E E is my favorite subject. My favorite, my favorite. What is your favorite subject? B E or what? Once in a week. Art and music. Twice in a week, hey history and German. Three times in a week, math and English. But once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, and seven there times in a week. Elements. There is too much homework. <laughs> it's remember that communication is the key. To our house. Math is our favorite subject. Her oh, favorite. Her favorite. What is your favorite subject? Channel is math or what? What is your favorite subject? Your favorite. Your favorite. What is your favorite subject? Come on, say it. Once in a week. Art and music. So always remember that we should know the practice of different kinds of elements in communications. Because communication is the key to have a good and better communication between your friends, family, and etc. So that's all for today. I hope you learned something from today's video. And please subscribe, like, and comment this video. And don't forget to click the notification bell button for more updates on our next video. Hope to see you again. Bye!